Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Macro Simplified. I hope all of you are doing fine. From this video of PYK series, I will discuss the topics of general microbiology. So in this first video of general microbiology, I have discussed about gram stain. It is an important topic, easy to remember, easy to understand. Just go through it and make your own notes and you will be able to answer any question related to this topic. So let's start with the video. So the MCQ asked was, a patient presented with complaints of fever with difficulty in swallowing. A throat examination reveals swollen gland and a thick whitish membrane over his tonsils. A throat swab was taken and microscope examination of his stained is shown in the image below. Okay, so this is the image. And which of the following is correct step for staining using below mentioned reagents? Okay, so first of all, what is this case? This case seems to be, if you have gone through the video, this case seem to be difficult in swallowing, swollen glands, thick whitish membrane, very easy to diagnose if you have gone through the video of coronibacterium diphtheria. So it is a case of diphtheria which is caused by coronibacterium diphtheria. So the strobes, throat swab was taken and it was stained. So usually for coronibacterium diphtheria what is stain we use? We use, we use Albert stain. Okay. But then Albert stain, if you remember, the color of the organism and uh, the color of the granule is not this blue color. Okay, what is that color? That is green in color. So, what it should be? It is not a Albert stain. By seeing the color of the bacteria in this image, you can clearly say that it is not an Albert stain. So, this is maybe any other stain, but not the Albert stain. But if it is any other stain, what it stain it could be? So if you know, coronibacterium diphtheria is a gram positive bacilli. Okay, so gram positive bacilli, and this also is purple in colors. Okay, bluish purple in color. So this is a gram positive bacilli. So obviously it is a gram stain. So what are the reagent which we can use for gram stain, or which we use in gram stain? In the number of the reagent mentioned. Grams, iodine, crystal, violet, safranin and acetone. Then what, what should be the sequence? The first A we should use is crystal violet. Second is grams, iodine. Third is acetone and fourth is safranin. So what should be the correct answer? 3, 2, 6, 4. So this is the correct answer. So let's see more about gram stain. So the gram stain. Gram stain was originally discovered by Hans Christian Gram in 1884. Okay. And what type of stain is gram stain? Gram stain is a differential stain. And what it differentiate? It differentiate the organism into gram positive and gram negative on the basis of the color. Okay. And what is the principle behind this differentiation? It is because of difference in the physical and chemical properties of cell wall. Okay, the difference in the cell wall is reason for the different color of gram positive and gram negative bacteria. Okay, and what are the reagent which is used for gram staining? So, gram staining reagents are divided into four categories. First is primary stain, second is mordant, third is decolorizer, and fourth is counter stain. The primary stain which is commonly used is crystal violet which is basically a basic para rose aniline violet dye. Okay. Para rose aniline violet dye. Okay. Mordant. Mordant is Lugol's iodine also known as Gram's iodine and it is an aqueous solution of iodine. Decolorizer is, can be acetone, it can be alcohol and counter stain can be safranin, can be basic function and can be neutral red. So we will see one by one the reagents, the primary stain. The primary stain is basically as I told you is a basic para rose aniline violet dye and what is the most common dye which is used as a primary stain is crystal violet. Okay, Apart from crystal violet, methyl violet or gentian violet can also be used. Both of these three names can are now commonly used interchangeably. Okay, So sometimes you may see crystal violet or methyl violet or gentian violet written in a textbook. Okay, And what it will do, where it will bind when it's staining? It will bind to the cell wall and the protoplasm that is the cytoplasm of the cell. So it will bind with both the cell wall and the cytoplasm. Remember this that it will not only bind to the cell wall. It will bind with the cell wall and the protoplasm too. Okay, And 
इट कैन बी फर्दर इट्स टेंड एन बाई एडिशन ऑफ सर्टेन केमिकल सच एस सोडियम बाइकार्बोनेट और सोडियम सॉरी अमोनियम ऑक्जलेट ओके नाउ द मॉडर्न विच इज यूज इज एन एक्वर सोल्यूशन ऑफ आयोडीन विच इज बेसिकली अ वीकर सोल्यूशन ऑफ ल्यूगल्स आयोडीन सो वट परसेंटेज वी यूज वी यूज वन परसेंट आयोडीन सोल्यूशन और ल्यूगल्स आयोडीन सोल्यूशन एंड वी कॉल इट इज ग्राम्स आयोडीन ओके सो वन परसेंट ल्यूगल्स आयोडीन इज ग्राम्स आयोडीन सो वट इज द परसेंटेज ऑफ आयोडीन इन ग्राम्स आयोडीन इट इज वन परसेंट रिमेंबर दिस and it act as a mordant mordants means which helps in the binding of the color to particular substance okay so in this case this mordant helps in finding a dye what is the dye that is crystal violet iodine complex with the structure of the cell and it will also bind temporarily to the peptide glycan layer of the cell wall and make it less permeable so that's why it will inhibit the leakage of the diiodine complex from the cell so it will enhances the property of crystal violet and make a cell more gram positive it is if it is a gram positive okay so now coming to the decolorizer the decolorizer which is used commonly is acetone it is the fastest and most specific one and it is applied for 2 to 3 seconds so very short duration okay so if it is applied for more than this duration what it will lead to it will lead to over decolorization and convert gram positive into gram negative okay so this is the disadvantage of acetone okay so what we should do for a beginner we should tell them to use absolute alcohol because it is the slowest one and it can be applied and reapplied for a minute so for a beginner which decolorizer is best absolute alcohol okay and apart from that we can use acetone alcohol so we can slow down the speed of acetone by adding alcohol to it so one volume of acetone with one volume 95% ethanol so it will lead to decrease uh, increasing the decolorization time and it can be applied for 10 seconds so routinely what is the best one to use is acetone alcohol so this is the one which can be used for routine purpose okay and there is another a uh, method to decrease or the slow the rate of decolorization by acetone is by adding acetone iodine to it so 0.35% iodine when it is added to acetone it slows it rate of decolorization so iodine acetone can also be used okay and it can be applied for 30 second okay so these are the decolorizer which can be used in gram staining now coming to the counter stains which can be used the first is dilute carbol fuction second is neutral red third is basic fuction and fourth is safranin so these are the four counter stain which can be used okay so dilute carb carbol fuction gives strongest red stain color okay you normally we can get pink color but this will give strongest red staining and it is difficult to differentiate between gram positive and gram negative when carb dilute carbol fuction is used so it is usually avoided okay so second is neutral red neutral red is recommended for gonococcine staining and other gram negative intracellular bacteria and this safranin is commonly used point in 0.5% solution and this is commonly used and which one is another one which can be commonly used is basic fuction so it also can be used okay in routine staining okay so this this uh, in this image you can see the steps of uh, gram staining so the first reagent which is applied is crystal violet it should be applied for 60 second and what will it impart it will impart the purple color to the bacteria okay purple color to the bacteria as you can see in this image second after that what we will do we will wash off the crystal violet and then we will add to it the mordant which is iodine and it will keep it there on the slide for 60 more second okay still it will remain purple after that we will wash off and we will add acetone to it and the duration will be around acetone alcohol to it and the duration will be around 5 to 10 seconds and it will decolorize the gram negative one and the gram positive will remain gram positive okay and after that we will add safranin to it and we will leave for 45 seconds so those gram negative organism will stay in gram negative and gram positive organism will stay in gram positive so this is very simple see 
I A S okay C I A S C I A suffer you can remember it like that C I A suffer okay C crystal violet I iodine acetone alcohol or alcohol or acetone suffer suffering okay principle principle behind this there are so many principle given some PS theory cell wall theory so many theories are there so what is widely accepted theory for the uh, gram staining is so when we'll apply the crystal violet okay so what will happen this crystal violet it is actually a positively charged uh, dye so this positively charged crystal violet will bind with the negatively charged component of the bacterial cell okay and it will give a purple color to the cell so this crystal violet is positively charged it will bind with the negatively charged component of cell and give it a purple color so this is the first step okay now we will add the mordant mordant what it will do this negatively charged mordant or iodine will bind with the positively charged crystal violet in the cell and lead to formation of crystal violet iodine complex which is also known as di iodine complex di iodine complex okay so this di iodine complex will bind into the cytoplasm and also to the cell wall if you remember i told you in the peptidoglycan layer it will bind okay so this di iodine complex will bind into the cell wall and the cytoplasm now the third step that is the decolorization decolorization what it will do in case of gram negative bacteria in case of gram negative bacteria it will dissolve the lipid present in the outer membrane and it will help to leach the or to release or removal of the diiodine complex formed inside the cell okay and also if you remember the gram negative bacteria the peptidoglycan layer is very thin so it will also not interfere or it will not inhibit the release of the diiodine complex from the cell okay now in case of gram positive bacteria the peptidoglycan layer is very thick first of all and also this decolorizer will dehydrate the peptidoglycan layer and because of this dehydration the pores will get closed so it is already thick and the pores are also closed so what it will lead to the C the diiodine complex will get trapped there okay so the the uh, the bacteria will remain purple in color whereas in case of gnb it will decolorize and it will have no color okay now when the safranin is added this safranin will stain the gram negative bacteria pink because of loss of the cvi complex whereas the gram positive bacteria will remain purple in color so this is the basic principle okay remember this so you can see this is an image of gram positive cocci okay and this is an example of gram negative bacilli you can see the pink color rod and you can see the purple color cocci okay now there are certain limitations of uh, gram staining it cannot be used for all bacteria certain bacteria cannot be used such as mycobacterium we cannot use like corani bacterium though we can stain but it cannot be used routinely for uh, identification of the organism because of presence of mycolic acid in their cell wall okay over and under decolorization may give false results suppose if a slide is over decolorized then it may turn gram positive to gram negative if it is under decolorized even gram negative will appear as gram positive so another limitations third is culture of gram positive species may show gram negative cells if aged so if any culture is stored for a long duration of period so in that case the gram positive organism may turn into some of the cells may turn into gram negative and it will show a gram variable reaction but it is vice versa it is not correct gram negative organism can never be stained as gram positive remember this okay and use of antibiotic before sample collection also may give false negative result because of destruction of the viable bacteria and apart from bacteria this gram staining can also stain certain fungus such as candida and cryptococcus which can be stained gram positive so it is not only limited to bacteria okay so these are the limitations of gram positive uh, gram staining now there are certain modifications which we can see which is, which has got different purpose so first modification of gram stain which is used is coplefs and bierman is modification in which primary stain is used is methyl violet with sodium bicarbonate to strengthen the uh, uh, binding of methyl violet decolorizer in it is used is acetone acetone alcohol that is normal and this counter stain is basic function rather than safranin and it is used mainly for anaerobes and 
for staining smear for bacterial vaginosis okay so only thing which if you remember is the methyl violet with sodium bicarbonate okay this is important to remember for coplaf and beer menstein now the preston and morels modification in this they have used crystal violet with ammonium oxalate oxalate as an strengthening agent and uh, decolorizer is iodine acetone in which i have told you that uh, in this case 0.3 5 percent of iodine is added to acetone, and counter stain is dilute carbon friction. Okay, and it is stronger gram positive stain can be given in this Preston moral modification. Third is Jensen's. Jensen in this the primary stain is methyl violet. Counter uh, decolorize the absolute alcohol. Counter stain is neutral red, and it is used for gonococcus and meningococcus, as I told you while dis discussing the. Neutral red as counter stain. So neutral red when it is used as a counter stain, it is useful for gonococcus and meningococcus. Remember this, okay? Now certain gram positive and gram negative organism. So gram positive maybe uh, rod shape or maybe cocci shape. So if the rod is branching filament, so what it could be? It could be nocardia or Streptomyces or actinomyces. All these are actinomycetes. Okay. So gram positive rods present as branching filament is actinomycetes, nocardia, streptomyces, and actinomyces. Gram positive rod arranged in palisades or in angles. What it could be? Remember, Corynei bacterium. Okay. Arranged in palisades or in angles. Okay. Cuneiform arrangement. Short to medium, if it is short to medium, it is lactobacillus, and if it is medium to large, what it could be either bacillus or it could be clostridium. Okay, so these are all gram positive, but vary on the basis of their size and arrangement. Okay, now cocci, it can be either arranged in pairs or in chains, or it can be arranged in clusters. So in the pair and chains, the common one are enterococcus, which is commonly arranged in pairs. Pneumococcus is also commonly arranged in pairs. Streptococcus can be arranged in either short chains or long chains. Okay, short chains or long chains. The so short chains are mostly gram, sorry, group A streptococcus. So long chains are the viridans streptococcus. Okay. Now the cluster one is Staphylococcus and Micrococcus. So these are the gram-positive cocci and bacilli. Now gram-negative, gram-negative rods, maybe in rod shape, maybe coco bacilli or maybe cocci. So rod shape may be curved. So curved one are Vibrio and Campylobacter. Vibrio is usually curved, whereas Campylobacter may be curved or may be S-shaped. Okay. So S-shaped bacteria is Campylobacter. Remember it. And it may be short to medium. It is mostly seen in Enterobacteriaceae. Enterobacteriaceae such as E. coli, Klebsiella. Okay, short to medium. Okay, and medium to large. It is commonly seen in Pseudomonas. Okay, now Coco bacilli. There are so many, but you remember only one name. Gram-negative Coco bacilli most common is Acinetobacter. Remember this. Okay, and gram-negative cocci most common is Neisseria, Morexella, and Veillonella. Okay, so these are the various gram-negative organisms. So I hope this topic is now clear to you, and you will be able to answer all the question because I have included all the necessary or uh, <coughs> utmost possible content in this video regarding gram stain. So I hope this topic is complete now. So all the best. Take care. Take bye.